One problem uh, that you'll notice with using the rock tool that's built into view, if we go ahead and add in a rock, you notice we really don't get to select uh, which material we want to have on that rock. And I'll go ahead and add another one in. Go ahead and move that off uh, to the side just a little. And you can see every rock we're adding uh, is going to end up with the same surface. Now, in this case, what we can really easily do is just load in a new surface, uh, selecting one of our rocks, and then going up here to the right and uh, selecting uh, one of the rock materials or uh, any material you have, and even customizing your own. And that's not a big problem when you're just adding individual ones. Uh, the problem comes about when you want to create ecosystems of rocks. And that is because uh, you're going to be stuck with that material when you're creating an ecosystem. Now, the nice thing about the rock tool is that it is a very random uh, generator, and pretty much every rock you create is going to be different. And that's really nice for an ecosystem. I'm going to go ahead and delete these rocks and add in a standard terrain. And now my default scene uh, right now currently has the ground uh, with a nice grass on it. Um, and that is going to be applied to most of the materials and items I end up adding into the scene. So we have this terrain now uh, with that default material from that ground object. Let's go ahead and select our terrain. We're going to open up the advanced material editor for this click to add an ecosystem, and I'm going to add in rock. Now, we do have one option, uh, which is to create color variations uh, to our rocks, but we don't really have a, lo a lot of control uh, over that color variation once it's created. And that can sometimes be a problem, uh, because you might end up with colors that really aren't going to match your scene. So I'm going to select No, and now we have this rock uh, with that chipped material that is on all of our rocks. I'm going to go ahead and just click populate and we can see all of these rocks showing up on our ecosystem. Now we can change our color and do this manually. So I'm going to go over to our color tab. We can see we have an overall color and I'm going to increase our density just a little repopulate. So we can see some more rocks in there. And under color, uh, what we can do is either set up a variable color, change our overall color, uh, to change what these rocks are going to look like. Uh, any way we modify uh, our other ecosystems uh, with their color, we can also modify the rocks, which is a really nice thing. Uh, being able to use the color at low densities is also helpful. Let's go ahead and change our overall color first. And let's set it to more of a darker brownish gray color. Repopulate. And now we can see that showing up. The only problem is the material that is underneath uh, our chipped surface, some of those colors are going to be showing through and giving us uh, some very strange variations on this color. And we can also set up a variable color and uh, load in gradient maps and also set up fractals to kind of vary the overall surface of these rocks uh, in a pattern that is either a fractal or a noise node. Uh, but once again we're still working with that same bump map and that same overall material. So we're going to take a look now at creating our own little rock library that we can use uh, to create ecosystems and use them as objects instead of uh, individually random created rocks. And we can set up our own surfaces and then you can use that little rock library with different color variations uh, within your scenes rather than using uh, the default rocks that are used. And what we can also do, uh, just exit out of that and clear out that little ecosystem, uh, is we can use the rock tool uh, to create these rocks if you don't want to use another program. So first I want to delete our terrain we have added into the, into the scene. And we're going to go back and click on the rock tool to add in our rock to the scene.
And now what we can do is set up the material that we'd like to have on our rocks, uh, whether it's multiple materials. Uh, but typically when you're building a little rock libra library, you want all of your rocks, uh, different shapes, but basically the same material. And then we can create different libraries of the same sets of rocks, but with different materials. And that way you can add that to your scene uh, for the color variation that you need for your scene so it matches up correctly. So what we have right now is our default surface. We're going to go to click load and we can see that default surface is the chipped material. Now one thing to keep in mind is you cannot uh, overwrite this material to a new material and get your rocks to come out with that surface because the chipped material is going to be separate uh, than that rock material that's built in to view for creating our rocks. So we can choose uh, some of the other ones available uh, directly within view and just the ones that come with it uh, or we can go ahead and just customize our own. And if we take a look at this surface right now uh, it's actually a really good looking rock material uh, but it may not be exactly what we want uh, for this set of rocks. So let's go ahead and just create our own custom material and then we're going to use that and apply it to all of the other rocks we're going to end up creating and create a small little library of them. Uh, so let's just load in a new surface and we're going to select the default. And this is basically the default surface that's added to uh, most of the items in the scene if you're working with the standard uh, default scene. It's just kind of that drab color uh, but it's a good starting point. And then we can work our way from there in editing our color map. So let's go ahead and double click on that surface which will open up the advanced material editor. And we're going to start by using a solid color instead of a gradient uh, for this rock. And we're going to use some other tools and other functions in order to create uh, variations in the brightness and saturation values. So let's go ahead and edit our color map and we can select our current color which is going to be this one key we have. I'm going to drag this all the way down to the bottom so that we're working with a gray material and we have no color information just this basic gray. Click OK and now we just see we have this flat gray object in our scene So now we're going to add a little bit of variation to this. Uh, just go ahead and open up the Advanced Material Editor again. Right mouse click on the Color Production and go to Edit Function. In this way, uh, we can go in and create some nodes to vary uh, what this rock is going to look like. And we're going to start out by uh, just clicking in the blank area and adding in a color map node. And we're going to use this uh, for color correction. And there's a couple of different options we can use. Uh, let's start out with the HLS shift, which is going to give us the ability to edit the hue. And in this case, since there's no uh, color, uh, that won't take effect, but we can adjust the luminosity. And there's also a saturation shift. Well, that will also be uh, disabled uh, because we don't have a real color. Uh, but those options are there in case we end up adding a color map uh, with a little bit of color to it. So let's go ahead and change our link from our color map to the HLS shift. And now that is connected and we're currently seeing uh, no change because we don't have any of the parameters set. Uh, well, what I'm going to do is use uh, a fractal node and connect it to our luminosity. So I'm going to start out by adding in the fractal and we'll just stick with the default for right now and then edit that in just a sec. I also want to make sure I am showing all of our uh, different previews. Go to our preview option uh, right now we have a sphere. Our background color is the default. I'm going to change that to a uniform background. 
and then we can stick with the sphere for right now because that's going to be pretty close to what we have uh, for our rock. And we also want to turn on our parameter links which we can see next to our options uh, that we have. Just go ahead and turn that on and now we can see we have three different links. One is our hue, the next is the luminosity, and then our saturation. Well, let's go ahead and start with loom and we'll connect that to our luminosity. Uh, we see that we also have within the HLS shift whether or not we'd like to allow luminous colors. Well, I'm going to make sure that is checked off and turned off because we don't want this to be a really, really bright surface. We want to just kind of subtly adjust how bright certain areas are of this rock. And now if we click on our preview, uh, we'll be able to see what the rock currently looks like in the scene. Uh, we can also pull up the function output observer to take a look at a little bit of a better uh, surface uh, than what we have just within the function itself. Let's go to our simple fractal and make a few changes now. We're going to increase the roughness and you can see uh, that we just have that simple fractal with Perlin noise gradient. We can increase and decrease the gain and that will allow us to darken the rock if needed. And we can also adjust our smallest and largest feature. I'm going to go ahead and bring these options down a little. I'm also going to change our wavelength to 0.5. And that way we have a little more variation. And now if we want to change this a little bit more, uh, what we can do is use a turbulence node to kind of change the overall look of this fractal and something that looks a little more like a rock. So I'm going to click to get one of our blank boxes and add in a turbulence node. And I want to change this to an advanced turbulence. And then if we go to our fractal, we're going to see that our second red line is going to be the origin. And we're going to connect that to our advanced turbulence. And now we have a little bit of scattering. And what we can do is just adjust uh, some of these different values to vary our rock a little bit more change how large we want the effect to be and then the amplitude is going to really scatter that around. Now this is also controlled by a fractal or a noise node and currently that noise node is our Perlin noise gradient which is the same that we're using to generate the actual fractal. Uh, we can change this to pretty much anything we want. Uh, we could use the Veroni pattern, uh, we could use chipped but I'm going to go back into that Perlin noise and use a value gradient. And that should look pretty good uh, for what we're working with for the moment. And if we need to, we can adjust some of these other settings. Let's go back to our simple fractal and just turn that gain down a little bit. So we're starting with just kind of a black and white looking rock. Um, a little bit of variation in there. We're going to add some more uh, detail to that as well. Uh, but let's start out by connecting first our bump. So if we go to our bump output node, uh, we can just directly drag this line and connect it to the fractal that we're using to generate our luminosity shift. And that way that's going to match up a little bit more. Uh, but one thing we see, it's a very even surface uh, throughout. We don't really have a whole lot of variation and a lot of that has to do with the fact that our gain is turned down so low. So I'm going to use a filter uh, to increase the area along just our bump and that way it won't affect our luminosity shift. So we'll select our line between the bump and the fractal, add in a filter, and now we can use a variety of different filters. We could adjust this manually uh, with a curve. We can go in, add a sine wave. Now we can see much more intensity and this way we can adjust the brightness and contrast and get a couple of different looks for our rock. So now we have some smoother areas and then some really rough areas. So I'm going to increase that contrast and we can just adjust the brightness until we get a good variation. Now another thing you're going to notice is because we have that turbulence node, we don't have a lot of fine 
uh, detail on this surface. So I also want to mix this material uh, with another one using a combiner node. We're going to select that link once again between the bump and sine wave. And select our blender. And now we're going to create a fractal node to create those fine details. So we'll add in a simple fractal. And now this is actually going to be exactly the same one as we had before, uh, except without the turbulence node, uh, which is basically what we want. I'm going to increase our roughness to a very high amount and also decrease our largest feature. And then we can increase the gain as well so we can see a little bit better all the different details. And then I'm going to take our wavelength, and since we want very fine detail, uh, much smaller than what we already have, I'm going to take our wavelength and bring it down to 0.2. Uh, we could even bring that down to 0.1 for something a little bit finer. And now we have something else we can work with. I'm going to connect our blender uh, to our new simple fractal. And then we can adjust that blend amount between the two materials. If we bring it towards the right, uh, we're going to see more of that new fractal that we have. And you can also see that we may need to uh, maybe make that a little bit grainier. Uh, we could change this to a different type of pattern. We can change that to chipped. And now we have much finer details than we have with that Perlin noise gradient. We'll go back to our blender. And we could change this to an add option. So we're adding this surface to the previous one. And we can go through all of these different settings. Uh, we could also subtract those bumps. So they're going sort of into our surface. And then we can also multiply, which is going to blend it a little bit more. And we can really see uh, the difference we have now with that multiply function. And we can just start to bring in those fine details. Well, I'm going to change this back to the blend, which is basically the default, and just bring in some of that detail uh, to mix pretty largely with our previous um, node that we have. And then we can adjust our brightness and contrast in order to really bring out those features from our other fractal. And that way we don't lose that definition that we already have in there. So now we just have a really basic rock material. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and OK again. And we can start to see that showing up on our rock. And we can see that our bump map might be a little bit high right now, uh, at least its overall bump. But it really depends on the size of your rocks that you're going to be working with, uh, which is another thing to keep in mind when you're working on your rock library, is whether or not you want to use a global scale or an object scale. In this case, our mapping mode is set to world. Well, I'm going to change this to object standard and click OK, uh, which is going to change the overall size of this material. Uh, but this way, since we already have our rock size determined, no matter how large we make it, that material is going to stay exactly the same size. Uh, so that way, whatever size we make our rock is whatever size our material is going to be, and we don't have to worry about losing that information. So let's just zoom in a little here. And I'm going to render out a frame so we can take a look at the material and see if anything really needs to be tweaked with it uh, to make it look a little bit better. So I'll go up to our render options. Uh, we'll go ahead and render this as a broadcast quality. Render it to screen. And I'm working with 16 by 9 right now. I'm going to go ahead and change our resolution for the render to 1024 by 576, uh, which isn't a typical format. Uh, we could always go ahead and change that to other. But this should be good. We'll go ahead and render this out, and then we can take a look. One thing we can definitely notice uh, by the render of this rock is that the overall material is a little bit too big for it. So what we can do is just scale it down, and then we shouldn't have to adjust our bump map options, at least not too much. Let's go ahead and bring this down to 0.4. 
and then we can take a look at uh, another render. And if we take a look at the smaller size, uh, we can see that definitely looks a lot better. Although uh, we're still not seeing some of the major definition of the surface. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, scale this down a little. And we're going to take a look at another render. And then I'll show you uh, which scale in this case is going to work best uh, for this object. And then we can move on and start creating our other rocks and uh, maybe defining some other materials. With our scale set to 0.1, uh, we can take a look at our surface and see that uh, overall it looks really good. Uh, the only problem is that because we have such a low polygon object, uh, and most of our rocks are fairly low polygon because of the way we use them and how many we usually end up with, uh, what we have is these very jagged edges uh, that can be difficult to cover up uh, without sort of an overwhelming bump map uh, on the entire surface. So what I want to do is go into the function editor and just add in another bump map that's uh, much more defined uh, than the ones we have right now and also make that a lot larger. And that way we can take care of some of those uh, different areas on our rock and kind of remove that look that we have on the edges and maybe sort of blend that in. So go ahead and close that out. We're going to open up the material editor again, edit our function, and we'll need to blend, uh, once again, another bump. So first let's set up our new bump map. We're going to add in uh, what we can use is either a noise node or a fractal node. Uh, I'm going to use a fractal because we're going to get a little more control over what we're working with. And in order to see a better preview uh, of this surface and the bump we're currently working on, I'm going to disconnect the bump link uh, from our blender just to this new fractal we created so we can just see this bump map. And what we want to do is increase that wavelength. And now this wavelength is set to 0.1. And since we have our overall scale is set to 0.1, we really need to go a lot larger. So let's bring it up to 5 meters all the way across. And we're going to take a look at some different patterns uh, by adjusting our roughness and increasing our gain. Uh, we can increase our largest feature. And we may also need to decrease our scale uh, within the output observer so that we can see this a little bit better. And now we have uh, a very distributed bump right now. Uh, we want to decrease that roughness and just kind of get some finer edges. Uh, one problem with this chip material is we're really not seeing too much of that. So let's go ahead and change this uh, to something else. We'll go ahead and try drought. We can see uh, we have some cracks going in there. Uh, we could edit this surface and increase the crack width. Uh, but overall, uh, that's not really going to turn out too good. So what we can do is go into some of our other patterns and just kind of look for something that's going to uh, complement the surface. And we can try crystals. Uh, but with this, we still don't have a lot of definition. So let's go ahead and just change this to a couple other uh, different available options. Uh, we can try the Voronoi. And if we edit this, uh, we have a couple of different modes we can use. And let's change this to Spikes, Second Closest Neighbor, And uh, for right now, I'm going to scale this down, uh, just our wavelength, and then we'll increase that later. But this is mainly just so we can see the surface in our preview and really know what we're working with. And this pattern can sometimes be difficult to see, uh, depending on the settings that you have uh, for the different features. So we may need to uh, throw in some filters and kind of increase this a little more. Uh, I'm going to bring this down to closest neighbor. Uh, we could try angles.
And now let's just get this to a point where we can uh, not entirely see the depth, uh, but good enough where we'll be able to make out some of these cracks. And I'm going to add in a filter. And we're going to use a sine wave. Increase our contrast. And we can adjust our brightness. And then we'll be able to see this pattern a little bit better. And we'll also be able to blend this a little bit easier. And we got kind of a neat looking pattern right here. I'm going to add in a turbulence node so that we can uh, kind of squiggly edges on these cracks a little. So we'll add in that turbulence. And we want to connect our origin. And then we can adjust the amplitude. And that looks pretty good. So now we need to increase that scale once again in the wavelength, bring it up to 5, go to our turbulence, and I'm also going to increase the wavelength of this, uh, but this time I'm only going to bring that up to 3, and I'll increase our amplitude a little. And now we're going to blend together uh, this new bump we created along with the one we previously had. So we'll select our link between the sine wave and the bump. We're going to add in a combiner node. And I'm just going to disconnect and delete this line. So we'll select it, hit delete. Connect our first node to our blender and our first set of nodes that we have. And then connect the second. And I'm going to adjust our ratio using the blend mode more towards the right than we have on the left. So more of our new fractal we just created uh, than the old one we had. And this way, uh, we may need to adjust our overall bump of the surface, but we'll make sure that that new fractal we created is much stronger and those areas uh, are going to stick out a little bit further uh, than some of the smaller bumps we had. So we'll start right there and click OK take a look at our surface and then if we need to uh, increase the overall bump we can uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at a render and see how this new material looks and we can see that we will need to bring down the size of that new material and increase our overall bump uh, so let's go ahead and do that really quick we'll just open up that material editor go to our function and under our fractal we'll bring this down to 2 and then our turbulence, I'm going to bring down to 1. And then if we take a look at our blender, I'm going to blend this a little more towards that new material once again. And then under our bump section in the advanced material editor, go ahead and increase that up to 2.5 and click OK. And let's go ahead and render this out and take a look. And now if we take a look at the render, uh, we can see it looks a lot better uh, than some of the other ones. Uh, we might want to go and adjust the details, uh, maybe tweak it a little bit, uh, but overall I'd say it's done. So let's go ahead and close this out. And I'm going to open up our material and just make sure we give it a name. And I'm just going to call this Rock Set and then 001 and click OK. And now let's create some other rocks that we can use uh, for this little collection. I'm going to click the rock tool to add another one. And we'll just go ahead and keep creating new rocks. And we don't really need to worry about the position or rotation of them. What we really want to make sure we have right now is just a good variety of different shapes to work with uh, because when we're creating these with an ecosystem, uh, we just want to make sure that there's enough variation uh, for it to look realistic and not like it's the same uh, couple rocks copied over several times. So we could just create a couple in here.